standing beside him. Sparky looked very bashful and shuffled from side to side. Hello, Sparky, Ruskin said. How have you been? Very well, very well, replied Sparky, staring at the floor. I'm glad you're out of bed. Yes, said Ruskin. I felt very ill for a while, but everything's all right now. Your acting was brilliant, remarked Sparky. I was so excited when you were fighting the monster. I cheered and clapped along with all the others. Thank you, said Ruskin. Do you think... began Sparky, and then his voice broke off and he looked away. Say it, said Ruskin. Do you think we could be friends again, asked Sparky. We never stopped being friends, said Ruskin. Suddenly, everyone in the hall heard a noise. Da boing! Smash! Da boing! Smash! People stopped talking and looked out of the window. Alvis was in Lizard Street. He was smashing every window in sight and screaming, I wanted to be the hero! I wanted to be the hero! Ruskin stamped his foot. I'm going to stop this smashing once and for all, Ruskin said. Chapter 64 Ruskin marched out of the hall, down the stairs, across the playground and into Lizard Street. Wendy and Winston and all the other people of Lizard Street stayed in the hall. They knew how dangerous Alvis could be when he was in one of his window-smashing moods. Ruskin marched up to Alvis. Alvis was wearing his pyjamas with the padded shoulders and his helmet with a visor. His nose was very red because of his cold and he smelt of medicine. You! he cried, point, cried Alvis, pointing at Ruskin. You stole my part! You take everything from me! And he bounced the ball. Da boing! It smashed Mr Lace's window, landing in his living room, bounced out through another window, then and landed in Alvis's hands. There's not going to be any glass left in Lizard Street by the time I'm finished, growled Alvis. I'm going to break Mr Lace's windows and Mrs Warnett's windows and... No, you're not, said Ruskin calmly. Alvis glared at him. You silly little splinter, he growled. You can't stop me. I'm big and you're small. I've got muscles and you've got none. My voice is deep like thunder and yours is... Oh, be quiet, said Ruskin. I'm fed up with you. You're so, so wild. Too much wildness is boring. I'm going to tame you and make you interesting again. And with that, Ruskin snatched the ball from Alvis's hands. Chapter 65 The people of Lizard Street, who were still watching from the school hall window, gasped. Ruskin took the pin that had been attached to Corky's medal from his pocket, raised it in the air, then stuck it into the ball. Air gushed from the puncture. The ball whizzed out of Ruskin's hand and flew round Lizard Street in circles. It whizzed up into the air, whizzed past the people at the school hall window, past the pub, past Mrs Warner's shop, past Dr Flower's house, past Mr Plick's cinema, past Corky's old house, past Mr Lace's house. Then it hovered in front of Ruskin's house for a while before falling into the train and out of sight. The people at the window cheered. Alvis stared at the drain. He listened to the people of Lizard Street cheering. Then he looked at Ruskin. I had a dream last night. I, I remember now. And in this dream, you, you saved me somehow. Saved me from something. I don't remember how or what, but... And his voice began to quiver and break. No one likes me, he said softly. No one. No one. Then he fell to his knees and started to cry. Chapter 66 I, I never wanted to grow this tall, wept Elvis. I hate it. Why did it have to happen to me? Why did it have to happen? All I wanted was to say stop. To stay small like you and Sparky. Why did things have to change? I don't want these muscles. I don't want a voice like thunder. I want to play on the swings and eat lots of ice cream and, and have people tell me how cute I am. But they don't. They they think I'm grown up. But, but I'm not and I don't want to be. Alvis was crying so much he could barely speak now. And I wanted to be friends with Corky. But he liked you more than he liked me. And he... He bought you a ball. He bought it for you. 
No, Alvis, interrupted Ruskin. He might have given it to me, but it was meant for all of us. Corky wanted all of us to play together, but you, you got jealous. When Corky spoke to me, you, you stormed off. You were talking about theatre stuff, sobbed Elvis. So? I don't know anything about that. You didn't try, Elvis, did you? No. So you stole the ball? Yes, said Elvis softly. Then he added, I'm, I'm sorry, Ruskin. Chapter 67 The people of Lizard Street had left the school by now and were standing round Ruskin. They all stared at Alvis. I miss Corky, said Alvis, wiping tears from his face. I miss hearing his broom sweep the playground. Ruskin helped Alvis to his feet. We all miss him, said Ruskin, but we don't have to break glass. Can we be friends again, asked Alvis. We always have been, replied Ruskin. Alvis and Ruskin hugged each other. The people of Lizard Street cheered. Ruskin looked at them and said, I used to think that Lizard Street was the cracked pavement and the dark bricks and the road with holes in. But it's not. Lizard Street is me and my mum and dad and Elvis and Sparky and Dr Flowers and Mr Lace and Mr Flick and Mrs Walnut and Mr and Mrs Cave and even though he's not here, Corky Pigeon. And then in the loudest voice he could muster, he cried, I love you, Lizard Street. I love you. I love you. I love you. And that is the end of our story, Crindle Cracks. Now, what I would like you to do is look at the questions that we have written for you and answer those questions about what we have just read. I really hope you've enjoyed the book and I will see you tomorrow, everyone. Bye.